Hello there, my name's Philip from Zoolab and uh, thank you so much for uh, buying from us uh, this pre-recorded video which is a really fun animal mix and so this session is uh, simply going to be about four different animals, uh, a few of my favourite animals uh, and lots of sort of fun facts and information about those animals. Again I'll just say that it's a real shame that we can't be out with you face to face and letting you guys interact and get hands on with our animals as we normally do but we are delighted to still be able to uh, speak with you over a screen about some of our amazing animals. As you can see, once again, I'm inside the animal room of mine where you can see lots of enclosures around me full of amazing animals. But the four I'm going to show you are next to me, in fact, and we're going to be bringing these guys out one by one and talking all about uh, sort of how amazing they are. We're going to start with an interesting one. In fact, this is a creature that's a little bit different from a lot of my other animals. This is a creature that likes to live down by the beach. This is a creature that carries a great big shell round on his back which is his home and his house and keeps him safe. He's got a big claw like this. I'm sure lots of you have guessed it is of course a crab and a special sort of crab. This is a hermit crab. His name is Pinchy and he's a rather cool little critter. Now I must warn you that I can't make my animals do anything at all and they, they just do what they want and so we might not get to see him come out of his shell because he can be quite shy but I hope that he is uh, tame enough by now to come out and uh, sort of show his body, his legs and have a little wonder. I'll also move the camera so we can hopefully see him have a little stretch of his legs on the on the sort of tabletop here. Without further ado, let me bring him out. His name is Pinchy. He is a hermit crab all the way from Ecuador, in fact. But these guys are sort of uh, bred in this country. Now, here he is. He's just in the little sort of travel house next to me. He's a little bit muddy, in fact. But let me bring him out. This is my friend Pinchy. Now, straight away you can see he's hiding inside his shell and uh, like I said hopefully we'll get to see him come out. I can hold him up like this to prove that he is hiding inside and what you can see in fact is his big purple claw which he's got and a few of his legs tucked around the side but what I find most effective to have him come out is if I pop him down and again I'll pivot this forward so you can uh, see him there make sure you can catch him on camera hopefully he should come out and say hello now I'm gonna lower my voice because he can be quite timid and uh, the reason it is that he's got this shell on his back is to keep him safe uh, there are lots of things down by the seaside that might try and gobble him up his biggest predator are probably birds that would love to swoop down and eat this guy so that's why he's got this big shell to keep him nice and safe now he's starting to have a little wiggle and soon enough hopefully we should get to see come out the front of his shell uh, some of his legs. I say some because in fact we'll only see six legs coming out the front of his shell but he does have four more sort of uh, legs at the back of his body inside his shell that keep him really well anchored inside gripping on in fact to that sort of shell um, and so it's very hard to get him out of his shell. If you tried to pull him out, you'd probably do him a great deal of harm and stress and you might actually sort of really damage him and potentially kill him because he'll hold on for dear life. Now hopefully he should soon come out and soon enough we might see some of his antennae waving around as well, wiggling around. He's got sort of lots of little antennae and feelers which act like uh, sort of either sort of like, like his ears to listen and hear, sense vibrations or, uh, or to actually sort of t actually sort of touch and feel his surroundings too. These guys tend to do uh, lots of act have most of their activity at night as well so they have to sort of feel their way around. Now hopefully he soon comes out. If he does, what I can show you is exactly why he's got this shell as well. Now, like I said, it is his protection, but I can in fact pretend to be like a predator of his. And uh, you can see how he reacts and uses his shell. That's hopefully if he does come out to say hello. Now, one other thing I would love to tell you about this guy is uh, again if he does come out we'll see those antennae and he's also got two little eyes on stalks poking up out of his uh, shell and uh, hermit crabs use their eyes for something really weird in fact they not only use their eyes for looking around but they also wee out of their eyes so uh, if you see a crab crying because you think he's upset he's probably not he's probably just going to the toilet instead now I can see one of his little antennae start w wiggling around. I'll just go quiet to hopefully have him be brave enough to come out. Now 
The big difference between this guy, a hermit crab, and say, for instance, a snail that has a great big shell on its back, is a snail grows its shell and it's bound to its body and it, it builds it and makes it strong and tough and hard its whole life. In fact, this guy, he finds his shell and he pops it on his back to make it his home. So this guy, when he grows up and his body get, is getting bigger and he's shedding his exoskeleton to, to get bigger and larger, he, in fact, will have to change his shell. He'll have to come out of it and he'll have to find a new one, a bigger one in fact. Now what's quite cool is in the wild what happens is uh, lots of crabs will have to change at the same time and they'll get themselves into a line. They'll uh, get themselves in sizes. They're the biggest one and the slight, one slightly smaller behind, one slightly smaller behind that one, all the way down to smaller ones. And uh, what will happen is there'll be a chain reaction. When the, when the biggest one moves up into an empty shell that he wants to make his new house, then the one behind him moves into his old shell, the one behind him moves into his old shell, and there's a little chain reaction, they're all stepping up, changing home at the same time. Now I've been talking quite a bit and I was really hoping he was going to come out and say, uh, sort of have a stretch of his legs by now so he can see his body. What you, I will uh, sort of pick him up and uh, bring him up to the screen again so you can see him, but you'll, uh, you'll hopefully notice that he's got this one, just one big claw and he uses this big claw of his like a door to sort of shut, him, shut himself inside his shell as well. So even if he is sort of flipped on his back, uh, he, he tends to be able to sort of keep himself safe using this big uh, claw of his as a door. Now he's starting to wiggle. I can certainly see he's wave his an waving his antenna around a lot. Hopefully soon enough we should get to see him sort of pick his shell up and start having a little wonder. There he is, he's coming out. You might just be able to see his little face now. There he is, this is little Pinchy. He's brought his uh, his uh, his legs out, and he's in fact walking to me. He's walking away from you guys. Let me show you why he's got this shell. If I do pretend with my hand that I'm a scary seagull, and I do get too close to him, you'll see him tuck himself back inside his shell to keep himself safe. Now, hopefully, he does know I'm not really a seagull. So, if I uh, pop him back down, he should come out a bit quicker this time. Hopefully, I haven't scared him too much. Ooh. What I can do, in fact, just now is I'll hold him up again to the camera so you can see that big claw. There he is. He's a bit muddy as well. He looks like he's been holding onto a leaf there or something. He's also got quite pretty uh, sort of legs, a sort of uh, orangey colour. Let's see if he's going to come out. Sometimes he comes out in my hands so we can see his little face, but he might be a bit shy. There you can see his, uh, his sort of at the end of his pincer, hopefully. It zooms in. That bit out. Now it's a rather pretty shell, but it, it, like I said, they change these shells, and because he's my pet, it's actually up to me to uh, sort of go down the beach, find some shells, or buy them from shops, in fact. And uh, he, I put them in his tank, and he'll have to try them on and see if he likes them, and uh, see if they're a good fit for him. And we briefly saw him there, but I think he's maybe gone back into his shell. Perhaps my hand was a bit too scary coming at him. Uh, so I think he's hiding back inside his shell. Anyway, we got to see him very briefly, and he's a, a, a quite, quite a cool little critter with some cool facts about him. But what we'll do is we'll pop him away so we can see another animal that I'm certain is going to be uh, coming out to say hello properly. Anyway, a brief introduction to little Pinchy the Hermit Crab there. My next animal, though, is something that we can most certainly take a good look at and hopefully will uh, sort of have a little stretch of his legs. He's just down to me here. He's another creature, in fact, with a shell on his back. But he has got four legs this time, and uh, he is very slow, walks around on the land, and uh, he is a tortoise called Toby. I can see him down here, and I reckon he's got quite excited to come and say hello. So let me bring him up here. This, everybody. This here, this is my friend Toby the tortoise. I'll bring him right up to the to the camera straight away so we can see his little face. There he is. Now what I'm going to do is pop him down as well and pivot the camera once again so you can see him hopefully have a little stretch of his legs. Now uh, he in fact, I'll hopefully be able to rest this like that. There we go. Swivel him this way. 
he might be sort of slipping and sliding. This is a glass table, so it's a bit too smooth for him. You you hopefully can see, I'll just pivot this down a little bit more. Uh, you can hopefully see he's got these claws, in fact, and uh, they're quite important for him because he needs them to sort of grip and move himself around on uh, normally a rougher sort of land surface. Uh, but uh, he also needs these claws to dig, and he often digs, in fact, when he's uh, when he's coming to hibernate. He needs to dig himself down into the ground and uh, sort of uh, sleep there through through winter and he won't come out until it's nice and warm again. Now you can see he's having a little uh, sort of look around and a sniff around and that's I reckon because he's maybe smelt one of his favourite foods that I've brought for him uh, just here. He loves lots of vegetation and primarily sort of lettuce and whatnot, but his favourite food is strawberries. These are a real treat for him. These are his favourite, and I'm certain straight away, there we go, he'll uh, want to have a big bite of these. He eats just like a dinosaur, in fact, makes just a big mouth and clamps down with big mouthfuls of his food, a bit like a dinosaur. And it's in fact more like a sort of beak that he's got. This sort of uh, bony sort of uh, uh, jaws, in fact. There he is, having a good bite to eat. Oh, look at that juicy strawberry. These are his favourite, but he loves things like apples and cucumber. But most of his food, to keep him nice and healthy, is sort of leaves sort of uh, lettuce leaves and uh, lamb's lettuce. And Rosso is one of his favourites as well. He loves all that stuff. And it's often uh, often sprinkled with calcium powder as well, like lots of reptiles, to ensure that he gets good sort of bones. Uh, we give him give him calcium powder as well. Now that's a nice shot of him having a little bite to eat there. He's made a right mess, in fact, uh, <laughs> with this juicy strawberry. But with him close to the camera, you might see that he's actually got some scratches on his shell here. Now this is uh, because I got Toby from a from a family who uh, who used to have him as a pet. And in that old home of his, uh, he got attacked by a fox in the garden, in fact. And so these scratches here, and they're on the other side, this side as well, uh, that, that's the sort of the, the jaws of this fox that were trying to sort of gobble him up, in fact. And uh, it's quite a sad story, but that's exactly why he's got this shell. It keeps him safe. And so uh, despite the fox's best efforts, uh, uh, it, it, this he'll have tucked his legs and his head inside this shell and this is what's kept him really safe. And it is really tough and hard in fact. Uh, quite a lot like the sort of shell of the, uh, uh, the, the hermit crab we just met. It's, uh, it's it, again, it's bound to his body though, so more like a sort of snail. It's attached to his skin and uh, he then also has a sort of a skeleton inside his body as well. So he's got like an external skeleton and an internal one inside his body as well. What he's doing, I'll let you see, he's uh, sniffing again and seeing if he can lap up any of that juice there uh, from, the, from the strawberry that he loves. <laughs> now, I do rather like uh, sort of uh, tortoises, in fact, they're a really nice pet and they live for a very long time as well. So lots of tortoises can live up to sort of 60, 70 years old and lots of tortoises are actually left in wills. Uh, they outlive their owners and so they're, uh, they have to sort of uh, s uh, pass them on to their, uh, their uh, sort of their, perhaps their relatives or their, uh, their kids, in fact. <laughs> I think by well, the looks of it, he might have eaten that strawberry a little bit too speedily. He's cleaning up, trying to swallow it down. He ate the stalk and all, and he's maybe going after that that juicy patch there. <laughs> So, tortoises are really cool. They're a reptile, and reptiles are my favourite group of animals as well. So he's rather sweet. My friend Toby the tortoise, he's a Herman's tortoise. There are lots of sort of different types of tortoise. You can see he's made a right mess of that strawberry around his face as well. But there he is covered in the old juices. So, we'll say bye bye to little Toby. We'll pop him back down in his house so we, that we can move on and meet another of my favourite animals in fact. We'll say bye bye to little Toby. I'll pop him down here and I'll give him a, a proper lunch later, some lettuce and things as well. But I'm sure he loved that strawberry. But we will move on. I'll bring my face back into shot so you can see uh, see who's talking. Uh, that's Toby. Uh, but we'll move on, in fact, and take a look at another one of my favourite animals. This is something really cool and one that I'm not going to touch, in fact, because he can be a little bit dangerous. This is a creature, in fact, that has uh, two big claws at the front of its body and a sting in its tail. 
it is of course a scorpion now this is really cool something that again I'm not going to touch he's a little bit fiddly basically I can hold him and I have in my hands you can safely pick them up by their sting or sort of not sometimes sort of just scoop your hand underneath as well safely but um, I'm not going to handle him I'm just going to show you him in his box so I'll have to pick up the camera and try and move that around so you can see him but I'm really excited to show you him because scorpions have an amazing superpower. in fact it's a, a special power involving this special light here this is a uv light uh, sort of has a purple glow to it if i shine it there you can see it might come up on the camera it looks slightly sort of purple uh, but this is uh, something that does something very cool to scorpions it makes them change color now uh, we'll take a look at my friend sting the scorpion first He's in a little enclosure next to me. Now what I'm going to have to do to make sure that we can all see him just fine is move some of his deco decor and uh, uncover him in fact. I'm sure he'll be hiding under these bits of wood here. So we'll take them out. Now uh, you can see it's a bit sort of uh, uh, dirty on the side. This is all just sort of water uh, sort of stains in fact. He loves it where it's nice and humid. Now I'm going to bring this up and hopefully if I pivot this down you can see him there. So there he is, hopefully you can sort of see him. He does blend in a little bit at the moment because uh, he's a forest scorpion, an Asian forest scorpion, so lives in the rainforest, which is why he's really dark in colour. You get lots of scorpions in the desert as well and they're sort of a more sandy coloured. Now uh, hopefully you can sort of see him there, but I'll point out these are his big pincers and curl in his tail at the back there, that's his, uh, his sting. Now uh, scorpions are arachnids, they, uh, they're in the same group of animals as things like tarantulas and scorpions with their eight legs that you can see sort of poking out either side of his body four legs on either side and these big claws of his at the front they're in fact a part of his mouth they're called pedipalps and they're, he they're to help him sort of eat in fact help, help hold in place his food and guide it into his his mouth um, sort of uh, safely some of those bugs that he likes to eat are things like crickets and locusts which have really strong legs and if they were to kick him in the head or in the eyes then they could blind him or maybe even kill him and so he's got to uh, protect himself and keep himself safe using those claws to hold his food in place. Now there are two little black dots on the top of his head which you can't see at the moment uh, because he's all black but you will see them very clearly when I shine this UV light on his back. So what I'm going to do now is bring the light over and shine it down on him so you can see him change colour. It's really, really cool. A really sort of magical sort of thing. Uh, this change from black before to this bright bluey green colour, a teal colour in fact, which is really cool. And hopefully you might be able to see now those two little black dots on the top of his head, which are his eyes. Now this guy's got 14 eyes and some other scorpions can have 16 eyes, all in those two little black dots to help him see all the way around which is really cool. Now you'll also hopefully see now that he has got huge great claws. Now with scorpions there's a compromise. If you're a scorpion you can either have great big claws like this or you can have a really potent sort of venom in your sting uh, but you can't have both and so this guy because he's got these great big claws uh, he hasn't got a very nasty sting. If he stung me it'd be like a bee sting. I'd feel it. It might hurt a little bit but it wouldn't make me ill. It wouldn't kill me or anything like that. Um, whereas uh, scorpions with smaller claws, he's moving around a little bit now, I'll try and keep up with him, um, they're much more likely to give you a really nasty sting. They've got a much more potent venom than the ones with small claws generally. Uh, the world's most venomous scorpion has got a really cool name in fact. The world's most venomous scorpion is called the death stalker scorpion. And they're a sort of a, 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 a desert species in fact. There he is, he's having a wonder. I've certainly woken him up with this light now so you can see him stretching his legs, having a little a wiggle. Now, uh, before we pop him away, I wanted to ask a tricky question. Actually, with him walking around, I can now pivot this back down so you can see me again. And hopefully him at the same time, I can hold this up so you can see him having a stretch of his legs. Now, a really ch a good question about these guys is why they change color. Now how it happens is uh, the black parts of him that you can see there or before, uh, they are his bones. He's got this nice exoskeleton uh, and in it there's a chemical that reacts to this UV light and makes him change like this, makes him uh, glow in the dark essentially. Uh, that's how it happens, but the tricky question is why? If we talk about sort of uh, benefits for him then why did he change colour? And in fact 
is a bit of a trick question because actually nobody knows for certain. There's uh, lots of ideas, lots of theories. It might be to communicate with family members. It might be to attract his prey to him, little bugs that he likes to have for his dinner. It might be to sort of sense light over his whole body so he can better fit into nooks and crannies. There's all these ideas, but actually nobody knows for certain. And it's a very cool mystery. And it's not just this guy. All scorpions change like that under UV and become that bl bright bluey green colour. And they've also sort of found out recently that uh, there's lots of, there's a few other animals that react to sort of UV as well. Uh, things like f uh, flying squirrels and possums, they've uh, they found them to sort of glow a little bit pink under UV, which is quite cool. So uh, there might be some sort of bigger reason uh, that we don't yet sort of fully understand about sort of UV light, which is quite cool. Anyway, he's rather special, and I like these guys. I'm a bit biased because I'm a Scorpio, but uh, I think they're pretty cool looking with those pincers and that sting, and certainly with that special color change uh, sort of power. But we'll pop him away uh, because there is one last animal that I'd love for you guys to meet. I'll carefully pop back his, uh, a few of his house items so he can have a little hide again. We'll pop him away. And then we will meet my last animal, which I must admit is really one of my favorite animals. I do love all my animals for different reasons. And uh, this guy I particularly love because he's super duper friendly, but he also feels amazing as well. And again, I'm really sad that we can't be out with you guys letting you get hands on with things. But uh, this is one that I'd, I'd love to, for you guys to feel if we were there because they do feel really cool. He's beautifully soft and smooth, in fact. He's got no legs and he slithers around. I'm sure you've guessed. It is, of course, a snake. These are one of my favorite animals. They're incredible creatures. And I brought, in fact, with me my friend Slinky the corn snake, who we're gonna take a little look at. And corn snakes are a really popular sort of pet species of snakes. And that is because they do tend to be really lovely. You obviously get individuals which might not be uh, as nice as others, but t typically they're, they're really lovely snakes. And this guy, he is super lovely. This is my friend Slinky the corn snake. What I'll do straight away is bring him up to the camera so you can see his uh, little face and hopefully see him sticking out his tongue. He's constantly whipping out his tongue. In fact, that is his best sense by far. That is how he smells. Every time he sticks his tongue out, He's sniffing, he's smelling, and uh, it is a really good sense of smell. He'd be able to smell if a mouse had been here about a week ago. It's really, really good. And the reason, hopefully you can see, if I bring him right up, hopefully you can see he's got a forked tongue, which you might have known already. Uh, the reason he's got this fork in his tongue is so he can smell left and right. A little bit like we've got nos two nostrils either side. Uh, we can sort of maybe follow our nose. Well, they can certainly follow their tongue, sensing, uh, smelling where those things are with their tongue. I'll show you straight away. He's really pretty. Hopefully you can see this nice pattern on his back, but he's got a particularly striking, beautiful pattern on his belly as well. That's a lot like a sort of chessboard with these black and white sort of squares down his body, which is really Really cool, really handsome. Now, like I said, I do wish you could feel these guys because loads of people still think snakes are slimy because they're incredibly shiny, you can see. But that shine is to do with their skin. They've got a skin over their whole body, which is a lot like the uh, sort of uh, uh, the material of our nails. It's a sort of thin cretus material all over their body. Uh, and that's what gives them this sort of really nice shine. But that's what also makes them really lovely and smooth. They're not at all slimy, completely dry, but lovely and uh, smooth. And and really nice and soft as well because they're full of muscles. Now uh, you can certainly see he's having a good little wiggle around on me and that's uh, using these muscles in his body. He's in fact got more muscles than us. In our body, in a human body, we've got about uh, about 600 muscles. This guy's probably got about six to 10,000 muscles in his body. Loads and loads and loads. He's also got loads of bones in his body. It might not look like he has bones, because obviously we know bones to be quite hard and tough and rigid, Where and this guy's moving around rather fluidly, but he's got lots and lots of little bones. So all the way down his body, a nice long backbone, and lots of rib bones too and so all those bones and those muscles allow him to have a really good wiggle and move himself around no problem at all 
Now, some people are scared of snakes, which is fair enough, but uh, there's some snakes out there that can do you a great deal of harm with their venomous bite. Uh, but there are also snakes like this guy that don't have any venom at all, and these snakes are known as the constrictors. They don't have big teeth or uh, venom. Instead, they've got uh, uh, all these muscles in their body, which they use to wrap around their food and squeeze their food really nice and tight. And then they can make a great big mouth and uh, open up their mouth and uh, wolf down things about 10 times the size of their head. They've got a very special jaw which unhinges and uh, allows them to wolf down really big prey. Some big snakes can eat huge things like crocodiles and calves and uh, capybara, like uh, lots of really big animals. This guy, he likes to eat mice, and I give him one mouse a week, in fact. He eats on a Friday, he has the weekend to digest his food, and then he uh, often does a, a big poo on Monday, and that's the whole process all done. Once he's eaten, in fact, something like a mouse, you can you can often see a little lump in his body uh, here, uh, sort of around his... Uh, uh, the, the thinner part of him at the front. A little lump, but that's not there for very long before he's already starting to digest it down and uh, sort of uh, get the nutrients from his food. Now, there are some dangerous snakes out there and the world's most venomous snake is the inland taipan of Australia, which does have a really nasty bite, but they're also incredibly rare. And I don't believe they've ever, in fact, killed a human. There are some really sort of more uh, dangerous snakes in terms of uh, uh, their sort of proximity to humans and things like black mambas and king cobras, in fact. But um, these guys live in the cornfields in America. And actually, these are quite a popular uh, sort of uh, animal to have out there because they don't eat the corn uh, that the farmers are growing. Instead, they eat the... Uh, the mice that eat the corn and so they're a bit like pest control and so the farmers actually probably quite like these guys anyway i really like these guys these are sort of uh, uh, slinky here particularly is one of my favorite animals i hold him up you can see he's quite long he's uh, he's about he's over a meter about one meter thirty now uh, and uh, he's he's qu he's quite big, but he won't get too much bigger. They're not a huge species of snake, so, like some of these pythons and boas that can get sort of huge, big, fat sort of snakes that are up to sort of you know 30 feet long. Some reticulated pythons and things, but um, he's a, he's a, a relatively sort of small species of snakes, which again uh, does make them uh, quite a good uh, a pet species as well. Anyway, he's lovely and uh, one of my favourites. So all that remains for me to say is that we'll pop little Slinky away. I'll pop him back in his, uh, his little carry case here before going back into his big house. And uh, I'll just say that I've really enjoyed uh, introducing you guys to a few of my favourite animals in this animal mix sort of pre-recorded video. It's been great to have you sort of uh, purchase it from us and interact with us at Zoo Lab once again. And uh, hopefully we can come and join you for real in the future and uh, get you guys to be hands on with things. But until then, uh, stay safe and have a have a lovely sort of time whenever it is you're watching this. And uh, we hope to sort of see you soon. From me, Phil, and all the animals here, then uh, we'll say bye bye and uh, many thanks again. All the best. Bye bye. Hi, we're Zoo Lab, the UK's number one for ethical hands on animal encounters. 